hello everyone. Uh, welcome back. Uh, this is the uh, workshop uh, session three. Uh, my name is Feng. I come from uh, Penn State University. Uh, so as Jiping and uh, Cricket have shown to you that ENCODE has uh, uh, generated thousands of data sets and has made predictions of uh, in the magnitude of hundreds of thousands. So unless you have a full-time bioinformatician in your group, it's going to be hard and a town daunting job to go through the predictions by ourselves. So that's why in the next few uh, hands-on and a live demo uh, workshops, we are going to show you some of the uh, online tools we developed and hope to, to those tools can make your life easy. And then this workshop will be a live demo, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, I treat this workshop as more like a, a classroom or more like a computer lab that I led when I was a, a graduate student. So my job is to make sure you can follow what I do here. And the, probably at the times the pace will be too slow, but just bear with me just to make sure everybody is on the uh, same page, all right? So mainly, uh, today I'm going to talk about two browsers uh, developed in my group to assist you to go through the uh, uh, ENCODE data set. So let's see. Okay. The first, the first website is called ENCODE Element Browser. So do you all still have access to the uh, web, po web portal, encodeproject.org? You do? All right. So if you go to Encyclopedia, click Encyclopedia, About. Did anything happen? OK. So in this page, uh, just like Jiping introduced, uh, there are some uh, ground level annotations, uh, mid level annotations, and the high level annotations. So what I want to show you first is gene expression. Because I can guarantee you, if you are a student or a, workshop or a postdoc, that your PI, the most asked question from your PI is, is this gene expressed in this tissue or cell type? Do you really want to download all the data set from ENCODE to answer that question? Right, hopefully not, uh, unless you're a big show up. <laughs> Go to the middle, ground, uh, ground level, gene expression. There's a, a link to query. So everybody just do, feel free to do it. Uh, unless it's getting really slow on my computer, I may ask you to stop, right? But for, for, for now, we are still friends. Click query, it will bring you to this uh, wonderful uh, website. Of course, it's developed in, in my group. Uh, click human. Okay, four very simple options. You can search a gene expression, search all the uh, predicted TF binding sets, open Crompton for a given region or around a gene. And option four, you can search a cis element that is linked to a gene based on DNA1 hypersensitive sites. Right. So uh, in this text box, you can just text any gene you like. Uh, for me, my favorite gene is SOX2, so I type in SOX2. So it also, also have the autocomplete uh, function, click SOX2, click submit. Oh, what the router is really uh, performance wrong right now, cool. So in this figure, it can show you the uh, gene expression across 160 something uh, cell types. So each bar is a tissue or cell type, and then the value is the uh, transcript per million cells. I also want to mention all the data are actually are uh, processed through the same pipeline, and I would say majority, if not all the data, are actually are generated by uh, Tom Ginger's lab and the Rod Rodriguez lab. So Tom is actually sitting in that table. He will give a talk uh, later today. Okay. So the tissues are actually organized uh, according to their uh, tissue of origin. It's uh, manually cur curated by my uh, uh, student. And uh, if you go further down to this um, uh, website, oh, let me step back a little bit. So for this picture, actually, you can download it and directly use it for your publications. So you can click here, save a JPEG or a PNG. See, it's working, right? Pretty good. 
But uh, if you use it for a publication, there might be too many rows. You really don't need that many bars, right? So that's why my student uh, devised this very smart uh, function. So if you go further down, you can see you can choose what tissue you want to display and query, right? Uh, you can just do the big categories. You can look for all the RNAs or only the nucleus RNAs. You can use the uh, total RNAs or the polyselected RNAs. Here is where you can select all the tissues or deselect all the tissues, all right? So SAX2, we know it's a, it's a, it's a gene highly expressed in stem cell and uh, some other uh, progenitor cells. So let's go further down. Let me search uh, uh, ESL or I think it's H7, oh, stem cell. Choose one, two, three, four, five, six. Choose random six data sets. Go back to the top. Here you can update graph, okay? Click this, update. Voila. Now we are plotting the uh, gene expression for these six cell types, right? You put your a mouse over the bar, it can shows you the, the value. So these values are also normalized, so you can directly use it for comparisons. So far, so, good. So, so, so far, so good. We can follow the instructions. Keep in the back. You can see the screen. Uh, can you speak up? The cut off? Oh, the color is just, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, according to their tissue of origin. I think it just my student gave them the color uh, according to her, how her feel that day. So, yeah, to distinguish them, yeah. I think they look pretty, yeah. Right. Okay, so that's a gene expression. Uh, okay, your PI come back. Okay, so this gene expressed in stem cells. So let, show me uh, what TF or what open chromatins are located nearby this gene or in a certain region. So you can go back to human, option two, search for a cis element in a given region. You can be naughty, search for 100 million, or please don't, let's just be civil. Let's start just uh, chromosome one. Let me try one million to 1.5 million, right? Okay, click submit. Uh, probably should have used a smaller window. So whoever got something displayed on their computer, uh, raise your hand. Okay, yeah, good job. So in this page, uh, there are several tables. The first table is all the DNA1 hypersensitive sites. Of course, they can mark both the enhancers and promoters, or in general, any uh, TF binding sites, right? So there are two columns for this uh, uh, table. The first one is the, uh, the uh, uh, site, the, the coordinates for this uh, open chromatin. The next column is in what tissue this uh, DNS1 uh, site is present. Right? So you can see this is open chromatin in many, many tissues. In kidney, uh, in uh, all the other uh, KFAC2, all the cell types, all the tissues. If you go further down, Okay, so there's another table called TF binding sites. So this shows you all the TF binding sites in all the tissues uh, surveyed by ENCODE. Um, probably we will have a, a more updated version soon, but this is the version we have, I think, uh, uh, late last year. So this time, this table have three columns. Again, the first column is the coordinates of the TF binding sites. The second one is what TF are we talking about here? PAL2, RECORD1, or this guy? Sometimes when you have multiple, it means there are more than three or five TF is binding that region. We don't need to specify all of them. And then column three is in what tissue this TF is present. So you can see PAL2 is binding in GM12878. Uh, 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 KFAX2 have this binding sites, so on and so forth, right? And then if you do have a bioinformation in your lab, you can save this file as a C CSV file. It's a text file. You can directly manipulate uh, 
and uh, do your uh, comparisons with some other features you care. Right? Okay, pretty, pretty straightforward function. So option three, say you forgot uh, the gene uh, loci, 